Two. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and today we're going to take the mystery out of upgrading our Beeman bull pump. Whether you have the 1357, 1358, or 1359, the only difference is the caliber, 0 0.177, 0 0.22, or 0.25 caliber, I'm going to show you how to upgrade this. Well, we did a review video on this a few weeks ago, and uh, we gave it four and a half stars, and we had some negatives. I'm going to show you how to erase those negatives. So you can actually take this gun and turn it into this. Yes, I'm going to show you how to do this upgrade. Before we get started here, though, do me a favor if you hadn't already. Hit that subscribe button down in the corner. It doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel, and I am really grateful for that. Also, if you have an opportunity, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, we're going to have the Generation 2 bipods, which you see right here. I've got t-shirts, I've got hats, and uh, also have some inventory of mine that I try to recycle and uh, put it up there occasionally, but it doesn't last long. All right, so let's get back to this. This is our Beeman, and this one's actually a 1359, which is a 25 caliber, but what I'm going to show you today is applicable to any of the calibers and I'm going to show you how to really turn this into a pretty sweet, sweet rifle. Yes. So remember again, as I said, the original review, we gave it four and a half stars, and now I'm going to show you how we're going to upgrade this. Okay. So let me show you guys a quick reminder uh, on the trigger when we did the trigger test on it. Take a look at that. All right, let's test our trigger on our uh, Beam and Bullpup here and uh, see how it performs. We've got a trusty Lyman trigger gauge here. Let's see here. Two pounds, 11.5 ounces. Two pounds, 11.5 ounces. So that's your trigger. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to upgrade this trigger. I'm going to show you now how to upgrade the trigger spring in this, which is going to make all the difference in the world on this rifle. Okay, so. What you're going to need for this is go look around the house, go find some spare ballpoint pens because you're going to use a spring out of one of these ballpoint pens. Um, they work great for triggers. You're just going to have to find the right diameter, so you'll have to go through the various pins and see if you can find that right spring. So you're going to look for some pins. Other than that, you're just going to need some basic, uh, basic tools. We're going to need our... Uh, 4.6 millimeter Allen wrench just to take the stock apart and let's show you how to do it. Screwdriver and a couple other things. All right, so the first thing you're going to need, make sure your gun's unloaded. Um, if there's air in it, that's fine. Just make sure it's unloaded. So you've got an empty gun. We need to take the stock off. The way you're going to take the stock off is there's two bolts here. You've got this front Allen. You're going to take this one loose. Okay. Get that loose. And then you have a rear Phillips back here. And we're going to take this one loose. You just need a longer Phillips screwdriver. And we're going to remove the stock. Which is actually pretty easy. Let's just grab the back of it here. And just peel that up. So we got the stock. Let's just move the stock completely out of the way. Because we're not going to concentrate this on this. So a bull pump, just keep in mind, the actual trigger assembly is back here and uh, it just has an extension rod and then you have your trigger itself here. This is really, really simple. If you can see this, let's zoom in here for you a little bit. You've got two pins. Leave that pin alone. This is the pin that we're going to push out. We're going to push this pin out. And if you got a punch, something of that nature, that's what you're going to use to push this thing out. Let's just line this up. Let's put a little pressure on this. If you need to tap it with a hammer, just a little bit, that's fine. But you just need to get this pin coming out of here. See this?
this, this pin right here. We need to just pull this pin out. Not much to it. Okay, so that pin comes out. Now we have our trigger assembly here, and you just want to basically pull this little assembly out just like this. See the spring popped out of here. So we got our spring here, and you have your assembly. Okay, this is really, really simple. I'm gonna to try to get you an angle so you can see this. There's a little hole underneath the tri trigger assembly right here. That's where your new spring's gonna go in. That's where the spring came out of. So looking at this at this angle, this goes down in here like this. Right? And your little spring goes in here. I'll show you guys the schematic of this too. Anyway, so what you want to find is this is your stock spring. Right here. And you can see this is pretty stiff. This spring, all this spring does on this rifle is do the return for the trigger. There's no sear engagement, nothing. This is just the return for the trigger so it can push it back forward so then the safety can engage. That's all this is. So what we want to do is we want to lighten this spring up. So as I said before, you're going to go through your ballpoint pins and you're going to find something. So if this is our stock spring, this is, so if this is our stock spring right here, we need something that's comparable. So I went through a few ballpoint pins and I found this spring here. And if you don't find one to the right height, you can always trim it down. But just test the tension with your finger, just how easy it squeezes down and you're going to see. So this has about half the tension of the stock spring. So now what we want to do is we want to put this in the gun. You got to make sure that this spring gets underneath this trigger assembly. So we're going to take the little spring, our new one, which is our lighter one. Let's take, let's take the uh, stock one. We'll put that off to the side. And our new spring, so it's going to go right here in the bottom into that little opening. There's nothing to it. You just slide it up in there. You might want maybe a couple of screwdrivers or something to work with just so you can get it set. So, Okay, so take a look at this. Okay, so your spring naturally sets in the base of the trigger right here. The trick is now getting this assembly in without pinching the spring, and that's pretty easy. Get a small screwdriver of some sort. And you want to get in here and you want to take this spring and you want to kind of push it forward a little bit. And then you're going to come in behind it with your trigger assembly. Because see this flat part right here, that's the spring's going to rest against that. So you're just going to drop this down in here, just like this. Get that in there and you're going to push it forward. Then we just take our pin, line it back up with the trigger just push it in just like that then you can tap that you want to tap that in just a little bit just so it's nice and flush just like that okay now safety works so let's uh let's cock it okay now I'm just gonna decock it here but we just want to make sure the trigger works Yep, nothing to it. See this? Nothing to it. So now our trigger works just fine. We just tested that, as we obviously. And now we're just gonna throw the stock back on. So let's let's just throw the stock back on. And you, there's nothing to that, guys. Just line this up. Make sure this little piece here is lined up with your gauge so it kind of gets you an idea. Feed your trigger through there and just set this down. And then we're gonna reverse order with obviously uh, our mounting bolts and our Allen bolt here and our Phillips. So just screw those back on and we're good to go. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Now that wasn't that tough. I gave you guys step-by-steps -steps on that. You can also go a little farther with it if you wanted and you can actually uh, polish the assembly in the back. To be honest with you, in this trigger, it really didn't make much difference. So I would recommend just doing the spring and leave it there. But anyway, let's show you what the upgraded performance is. Check this out. Okay, now that we upgraded our trigger, let's test it. Let's see what the actual pull weight is. See what the difference is. 
from the stock trigger. All right, so we got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge once again. Let me reset it here. All right. One pound, 10 ounces. One pound, 10 ounces. Now, don't tell me that's not a significant um, upgrade, without a doubt. One pound, 10 ounces, well under a two pound trigger. It just shows you what a little bit of work will do for you. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, so this trigger is now, it is dialed in. And what I really like about it, by putting that uh, lighter spring in there, what it did, it lightened up the first stage on the trigger. So now it's a very, it's a very easy pull initially and then it comes up you can actually feel it hit the wall for the second stage and then it goes off so it really turned this into a great trigger it really did one of the other issues i had was i thought the gun was a little bit loud for the backyard and i mentioned that uh, in the conclusion of that previous review video in fact um, let me give you a reminder of what our db levels were check this out so shot number four 844 shot number five 831 there you go that's enough for an average anyway but that's what the 20 game pellet now we can solve that noise level with some buck rail suppressors here and believe me terry the owner of buck rail he has got this figured out now i'm going to show you a detailed video and how you install these suppressors and your options here so check this out now I'm going to show you how to install Terry's buck rail suppressors on this. Very, very simple. Okay, first thing we're going to concentrate on is this has a plastic shroud that actually goes over the barrel. And if you'll see the end of this, you can see it right here. It actually is set up for a 8 millimeter wrench, Allen wrench. So you can just put this in the end and rotate this. And this will loosen up the inner housing, and I'll show you what this looks like. So we have this plastic shroud. You're just going to unscrew this. Voila. There's your barrel. That's your actual barrel right there. And then this, this is your assembly. So the shroud goes over the barrel like this, and then this goes down inside. This is your stock piece. And it's not really, honest to God, this is not really a suppressor at all. This is, call it what you want, but this is just what's set up to hold the shroud on. So let me show you what options you have. Okay, so Terry came out with, he designed this, this suppressor. It's got this really nice compensator on it. And obviously that'll unscrew, but let me show you. So this is this simple. So you bring this piece back down in, right where it's supposed to be. Then we take this and get it down in here and we're just going to screw this in just like this and this is how simple this is first of all look how trick that is anyway so then if you want to put a suppressor on he is designed except it's nice and tight he is designed these new suppressors just unscrew this so your muzzle brake comes off, which is nice and simple. And then he's got either this design, which is kind of a non-tapered, little fatter design. I'm going to show you this. And I'll show you actually how these perform. We'll do a little DB testing on them. But there you go. That simple. And then he's also got a tapered. I'll show you real quick here. He's also made a tapered one, if you like this, which is a little smaller. See this? This goes on here just like that. Which is actually pretty trick looking. So there's this tapered version as well. Okay, now you ask yourself, okay, what if you already have a half by 20 um, suppressor and you just want to use your existing suppressor or you already bought a suppressor from Terry that's a half by 20 well watch this so let's remove this ok 
Okay. He sells this. Okay, this has your little half by 20 on it. So what this does, this goes down in here, threads onto the actual barrel. Right? So now you have obviously the option of your little cap on there, but then you can take your little cap off, and if you already have a half by 20, and you can use that on this setup, which is great. So Terry gives you both options, whichever option you like, whichever one you want to go with. So his newer option, which I really like that muscle, muzzle brake on there, and then the suppressor. So he has got all that on there. Once again, I'll got, leave you guys a link for that. But uh, let's move on and uh, do some testing on this. Okay, now tell me, are those easy to install or what? I mean, literally takes minutes. But what I want to show you is let's show you the updated results now. So let's do a current uh, DB test on this and show you what our results are. So check this out. All right, let's test the buckrail suppressor on this and see how much uh, quieter the gun is. This actually makes the gun backyard friendly. Remember one of my complaints, the original review is a little bit on the loud side. So let's go ahead and shoot. We'll just shoot three shots and we'll see how it averaged out sound wise. Okay, shot number one. God, that's quiet. The trigger mechanism makes noise. More noise than the actual round going off. Okay, and shot number two. I'm telling you, this is so backyard friendly right now. And shot number three. So see that? We dropped a full 10 decibels, which is huge, huge. So we were in the low 90s, now we're in the low 80s. So it made this gun absolutely um, perfect for shooting in the backyard. So once again, Terry, thank you. Outstanding and making these so affordable too. All right, let's move on to the next segment. So those buck rail suppressors, they work absolutely amazing. You saw that. We dropped approximately 10 full dBs, which is huge, which makes that incredibly backyard friendly. This thing, you could shoot this all day and late into the night. Trust me, it's nice and quiet now, thanks to the buck rail suppressors. And by the way, the smaller one, there's a smaller, more tapered suppressor. It's just as quiet as the larger one. So basically, you're just going for aesthetics, but it works just as well. And what's great is Terry gives you all those options, which is always nice. It's nice to have options and extremely affordable. I'm going to leave you guys a link. I'll remind you at the end, but I'm going to leave you guys a link down in the description portion of the video. You just click on that. It'll take you right to his website, and you can get your rifle completely decked out just like this. Now, what was the last issue that I had with the rifle? And I think I mentioned it in the end of that review, is about if you're in a resting position to do follow-up shots with this under lever um, cocking system. Because if you're bag resting it, you gotta lift the gun off the bag in order to do a follow-up shot. Well, guess what? Not if you have the buck rail barrel band on it, which has the Picatinny rails as well. And guess what you can do as a result of that? You get to put my Generation 2 bipods on there, which absolutely work perfect on this. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go ahead and show you how to install the barrel band on it because it is so simple. Check this out. Real quick, let's show you how to put the barrel band on your bull pump. It'll go on any one of these models, whether it's the uh, 177, 22, or 25 caliber. This will go on all of them. Okay, real simple. So we got our buck rail barrel band here with our uh, accessories, which is kind of nice. And I'm going to show you why in a little bit. But just make sure these are a 2.5 millimeter Allen bolt. Just make sure they're a little on the loose side so this will slide. Your next move, pull the filler cap off. Put that off the side. You're then going to line this up. Obviously, the barrel is going to go on the top. You're just going to line this up and just kind of work it slowly through. Just like this. It's going to slide back. You're going to line this up. Just, I like this lined up right at the edge of the silver uh, filler cap. And then you're simply just going to tighten it up. Boom. Done. Put your cap back on. 
That's it. So now your barrel ban is on there. All right, tell me that barrel ban installation isn't easy. And the benefits from it are just tremendous. I mean, look at this. You've got my Generation 2 bipods on here. Nice, stable platform for shooting. I mean, really stable platform. And now, guess what? You can do those follow-up shots. Piece of cake from the resting position. So you got to remember, what we did today is we just addressed all the negatives that I had in the original review. And we eliminated the negatives. I mean, we totally improved the trigger. We made it backyard friendly because of all of uh, Buck Rail's uh, suppressors. I mean, look, and we have all these suppressors to choose from. It's just, anyway, I just love the fact that Terry keeps adding products um, to his site for the various air guns. But anyway, these are must upgrades. And you know what we did by doing all this? We turned this into, rather than a four and a half star rifle, it is now a five star rifle with these uh, different accessories. And it's backyard friendly. You know, you put one of those suppressors on there, you put one of my Generation 2 bipods on there, and man, do you have a setup. You really did. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. Remember, in the beginning, I promised you guys not simply reviews. I'm going to do some videos for you on how to upgrade and work on your guns, and this is definitely one of those. So, again, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time, I hope you and your families are doing well. You're getting plenty of shooting in, so take care and God bless.